Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. The Rams are 2-1 and one and heading to San Francisco to take on the rival 49ers on Monday Night Football, coming off a critical win over Arizona in the desert. And our guest this week is a 26-year-old. He is a Super Bowl champion, and he was instrumental in that most recent victory over the Cardinals. We say welcome to Rams defensive back, Grant Haley. How are you? I'm doing good. I appreciate you guys having me on the show today. It's exciting. Well, we are excited to speak with you. And, and a quick word to our audience. I, I don't think I've ever done this before, but we are going to start with some football, of course, as we always do. But I, I truly feel that's the least important part of our conversation that we're going to have here today. So if you're listening, I strongly, strongly encourage you to hang around for this entire episode. But if you're short on time, if you got to speed things up, scrub ahead um, to the part of you know Grant's personal context that I think makes his accomplishment this week and really the last year with the Rams uh, so much richer. So uh, with that, we'll get you to week right. three and we'll start on the field. How do you feel like you played against the Cardinals? You know, I think uh, I think it was good. It was good to get my feet wet um, again, just going back out there and you know being in the in the defensive scheme. You know, was new to me. You know, last year. I kind of was involved more on the special team side. So being able to, you know, go out on defense and take the coaching, you know, that I've learned from last year to this year and just how they kind of see the, the game unfold, um, you know, I felt pretty confident going in. I think the coaches got me prepared and, you know, having guys like Jalen um, out there and just you know, him reiterating things we've seen in film just to, you know, pop up in my knowledge that, um, you know, can make me play faster out there. Well, I know there's mixed feelings about pro football focus, but they thought you played pretty well. You were one of the highest graded Rams yesterday. Oh, PFF, if that's what they want to say. You know, I think there's also things I can get better at, yeah. you know, go and watching the film, you know. You know, I think I could have tackled better, but I'm excited, you know, to continue to, you know, it's an opportunity to get better. So that's all I can ask for. Your defense faced 81 plays. That's a lot for an NFL Sunday. Did not surrender a touchdown to Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Will you take us inside that game plan you mentioned a little bit? Because it seemed unique uh, to the team you were playing and also kind of the time and score and the circumstances that presented themselves yesterday. Yeah, I think, you know, going into the week, obviously, we know, Kyler, you know, he's a fast athletic quarterback. So you want to keep inside the pocket. And I think, you know, the defensive line and the edge rushers and everybody who was up front rushing him did a great job, you know, get him kind of scattered off his reads, off his feet. And, you know, for us in the back end, and it's, it's, it's not it's pretty, it's pretty good to have, you know, those guys up front, AD, Flo, A. Sean, Greg Gaines, because, you know, you know the ball is going to come out quick and, you know, be able to, you know, play everything top down was kind of part of our process. You know, we knew they'd like to take shots and, you know, kind of over the game, you kind of saw them change their game plan. You know, they ran a lot of quicks, a lot of screens and, you know, eventually, you know, you can dump and dime all day, but, you know, you're going to have to take a shot. And, you know, I think the times they did take a shot, you know, our DBs were ready and we, we did successful and we, I don't think we only had, you know, really two you know big plays that we considered so I think it's something that we don't want to give up but you know we're not um, beating ourselves on the head about it. How hard is it as a corner to stick with a game plan that requires you know discipline and patience top down like you described I'm sure there's a competitor part of you that yeah. wants to get up and press man and get after a little bit but that made sense for yesterday's circumstances. Yeah that? absolutely I think and also just being able to you know, you're going to have your opportunities. You know, we have looks to own that we go through in the weeks. And, you know, you're going to have those t times where you can play faster, play a little bit slower and maybe jump a route because you know the concept mm -hmm. coming, you know, based on film study and all the things that we've seen throughout the week. So, you know, it was about being confident and just kind of seeing the whole perspective, seeing the whole formation. And, you know, that's what I tried to, you know, take from take from the week and just to apply to the game to, you know, play as fast and, you know, as physical as possible. Speaking of confidence, you already dropped his name once, Jalen Ramsey, and he kind of set the tone, didn't he, with a pair of third down pass breakups, a physical hit on that yeah. surgically repaired shoulder in the running game. Mm -hmm. And he's spoken so confidently about the depth of your room going back to training camp. It's something like he, I think he relishes when guys deeper down the depth chart, or even from the practice yeah. squad, get to have their moment. And he wants to make sure he sets the stage for you. Is that fair to say? What did you sense from Jalen? No, absolutely. I think throughout the week, you know, obviously, you know, we had some up and downs on the on the depth chart and just based off of things that were going on. And the other week, I thought him just being and talking to me and sh realizing how, you know, the confidence he had in me, you know, obviously helps you as a player to go out there and play confident. But, you know, when he goes out there and, you know, he's flying around and making the big plays and being a tone setter and a game changer, you know, that brings energy to our team. You know, we were just in the DB room and watching that third down um, 
play he had in the in the first half or first quarter when they went back shoulder to AJ Green and he stopped them and you know we were talking about that and everyone just the energy in the room you could say see the guys on the sideline just you know how much that sets the tone for us as a DB group and you know it's been awesome to be able to you know see guys like step up you know Kobe and DK and you know a lot of these younger guys having a lot of game experience to go in and play some big time football games it just shows the depth of the room like you were saying and you know I think that's just something that's you know, know, amazing about, you know, the quality that the the coaches and the, the staff they look at to be, be able to be successful, you know, when you don't have maybe your one, two, three guys at, at the top. Grant, how did those yellow socks look on film? Uh, <laughs> it's, I, they look good. They do look good. You know, it's, um, you know, uh, that's his little style right now. So, you know, he's, he's he brings his heat every game. What's going on with the DBs? Week one, it was something different too. kind of set yourselves apart. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just being able to show that we stick together, you know, being able to, I think that was a pretty cool thing. Everyone going out and white that first game and then obviously just being able to, you know, bring everybody along in a group, you know, it's that next man up mentality and whoever, you know, has the opportunity to go out there. We don't want to, you know, just because you're out there doesn't mean, you know, we're going to, it's not going to be great. You know, mm-hmm. we have a, you know, a standard in the room that we want to thrive to. And that's what, you know, I think has helped us, you know, be able to, you know, have not guys that the second, third type players, but, you know, fifth, six people going in to be able to be productive and yeah. successful. It is time for the uh, NFL all day play of the game. And Grant, I wonder if you can pick out a moment, your favorite play uh, from the win over the Arizona Cardinals. I think, honestly, when I look back at it now, it's it's got to be um, AD sack. You know, I think uh, just watching over the years, a couple, you know, he's been such a dominant player in this year, this league, and being, to see him be able to do that and just see how Kyler was just kind of running away from him um, on that play is just, you know, it was amazing moment I didn't even know it until after the fact but you know it just shows you know the dedication and the commitment the sacrifice and how great he really is just uh to kind of come up and have that play in, in a big moment as well yeah I mean you're gonna be telling your kids someday that you were on the field for a lot of his <laughs> signature hall of fame highlight reel plays yeah, and that's a blessing just to be able to play with you know those guys him Bobby Wagner Jalen you know guys that you know have taken their careers to the next level and learn from them be able to talk to them and be on the field with them it's special I've seen a lot of his sacks. That flying lunge to get Kyler's shoelaces uh, was different. Yeah. That one was special. He knew he needed, he wanted that one. I, I just wish they had ruled it a sack on the field, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, there was a flag down, there was an incompletion, but right. hey, there's exactly. plenty more to come for AD 99. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for that. The NFL all day play of the game, something we'll do each week here on Rams Revealed. Transition a little bit to the life of a practice squad player, because that's where last week started for you. It's where you've spent much of your career, right? With three different organizations. The Saints, the Giants, now the Rams too, but you were undrafted in 2018, so you've had to earn it at each step along the way. In a week like last week, Grant, what's it like to be built into a game plan kind of suddenly over the course of just a couple of practices? I think for me, um, you know, you know, going back to last year um, at the beginning of the year, it wasn't anywhere. I was on the couch at home and, you know, there's a lot of things going through my mind in just terms of, you know, football. Um, but when I got the opportunity again, I was like, I'm going to enjoy every single day, you know, my, no matter what my role is, I want to, you know, go out there and have fun. And, you know, um, you know, my role has been, you know, more helping out the offense and special teams. And, you know, I take it really seriously because, you know, I think, you know, I give get to give good lips, good looks for the offense and, you know, feel like that um, it's important when they go out there on game day. So and not just when it comes to the offense, but when it comes to defense, making sure I'm on top of my key so you know if I do get the opportunity that I'm ready to go out there and be successful and then I'm not you know the weak link going out there because I wasn't prepared and I think that's the thing and I try to tell a lot of guys you know from the position I've been in being on practice squad different places just you never know when your opportunity is going to get called and you just want to make sure you make the most of it so you know they have a reason to keep you up there what is it that people have told you over the years is it size is it speed because you've made some nice plays you've had some great NFL moments uh you know for me it's just it's just the process you know I don't take it you know too hard um I did probably pretty early in my career but you know now you know I'm just thankful for the opportunity I'm grateful to be out there um, every single day, whether it's practice squad or, you know, going out there to play games because, you know, this, you know, this is special, you know, and everybody doesn't get a, a long career. And to be able to be going into my fifth year and trying to go battle for practice squad and up and down. So, 
I, I, I love every single moment of it, and I'm just truly grateful. Reminds me a little bit of your former teammate, Double D, Dante Dion, yeah. and, and kind of his journey through the NFL and how he made the most of, of those opportunities Absolutely. to be elevated. How about a quick word on the 49ers? Because you were up against the 49ers in Week 17, again in the NFC Championship game as you were active throughout that postseason run. For our fans, this is the biggest game on the schedule. This is the number one rival. It feels like your locker room has finally embraced that too. Yeah, I would There's say. There's no love lost between the Rams and the Niners. I would say, you know, especially last year, you know, when it came down to the playoffs, you know, it was a it was more a physical mindset. You know, we put the pads back on just to, you know, make sure that we knew what we were about to go into. Is physical. that right? You put pads back on in practice? Yeah, we put pads back on in, um, in uh, the uh, playoff before in the playoffs in January just to make sure we reiterated like we knew how this game was going to go. You know, it's a, they're a physical team. You know, they do a great job in the run game. Um, obviously, their defense has been pretty successful over the last couple of years. So, you know, as a team, we knew that it's, it's going to be a it's going to be a fight. And I think, you know, each game, it's that's how we have to approach it. I didn't know that. That's super rare yeah. in the National Football League, right? Especially, you know, in the playoffs. 100 yeah. percent. Totally. Uh, before we transition to some other topics, um, and I do want to get to your personal story, which is touching in so many ways. I want to bring in Sean McVay here, head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. This came from our coaches show on Monday when we asked him about what you and your performance meant to the win over the Cardinals. Ever since, really, we ended up getting him here, uh, JB, I've just always had tremendous respect for the competitor, the consistency at which he approaches practice. You look at some of the looks. I mean, you know, I think sometimes the the players are always the best indicator of, all right, predicting, you know, the guys that are going to have future success if their opportunity is called. Ask Cooper Cup what he thinks about Grant Haley based on the amount of times that he's got to compete against him in practice-type settings where you want those guys to give competitive looks. Grant's always had a great feel. He's got a great, you know, constant. Seb Trigger, great instincts, good physicality and toughness in the short area quickness to really be able to shine uh, when you're playing on the inside parts of the defense, particularly at that star position. All right, that was head coach Sean McVay. Uh, the Coach's Show can be heard on all your Rams platforms each Monday night. We continue with uh, Rams Revealed with Grant Haley now following the second win of the season. It came in the desert against the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, but let's rewind time a little bit. And I learned a lot about you overnight. Uh, and preparing for this conversation, and some of it was not easy. Um, I'll let you start. Who was Dr. Leon Haley Jr., and what happened? Um, that is my father. Um, you know, one of the biggest important pieces of my life to this day. Um, you know, last year, the day before camp, um, I was reporting to camp because I was still in New Orleans, um, and I got a call that my father was in an accident um, and passed away in West Palm Beach in a jet ski accident. And, you know, for me at that time, um, it was obviously unbelievable grief, um, but it was just, you know, what would, you know, kind of my father want me to do? I know he raised me to be, you know, a man of character, a man to, you know, keep going, um, you know, when he isn't around to take care of my brothers and sisters, my, my grandparents, my mom, whoever, you know, is still, you know, in the picture. And, you know, um, it's been a, it's been, um, not easy, I will say. There have been times, um, especially last year, I think, you know, the, how last year went through that, getting cut, not being at home, and then being in the practice squad and then going to the Super Bowl. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the journey was unbelievable. Um, and it was so special for me um, to have my, my dad's parents, all my grandparents at the Super Bowl, because, um, you know, that's like a once in a lifetime experience. So, for that, it was it was a family experience because we had been through so much, um, you know, through this year, and it was it was special to have the, you know, a, you know, a moment that I could share with my family of you know pure happiness, and so the last moment uh, been with everybody together was you know just heartbreak. I mean, that was unbelievable what you just said. And before I follow up on a couple of those things, just for the benefit of our audience hearing this story for the first time, um, your father was fifty six years old when he passed. Mm, yes. And he was the CEO for the University of Florida Health System in Jacksonville. Yes, sir. That was a big opportunity. That was a big appointment, as I understand. Yeah, um, my senior year of college, he, uh, my last or er, my junior year of college, he had actually um, got the opportunity to go down to Jacksonville. Very excited for him. He was very excited for it, and he just embraced the culture, the people, you know, the community of Jacksonville. You know, ever since. He had passed has been, you know, one of the biggest support systems for my family, just continuing his legacy, um, the hospital there. So, 
you know, it was a dream job. And, you know, it was, uh, it was like, it was one of those things where, you know, I kind of, you know, you see your dad and you see somebody is like, I saw him like, you know, finally like happy, you know, was doing something he was loving to do. So, um, you know, it was obviously tough, um, you know, cause he had, you know, reached something he had always dreamed about of being, you know, one of the first African-American doctors to become a CEO for a hospital. And I think that was so important to him and, you know, it was a peak in his life, and, you know, I'm glad, you know, he was able to, you know, accomplish a dream that, that deep to him. As for your dream and what you accomplished, you said it was a day before you reported to Saints training camp? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, um, yeah, mom called me um, that morning. I was supposed to leave that night to go to the hotel. I was already in New Orleans, um, but I was just going to drive over there. But then she had called me, and I was on a flight the next morning, obviously, to go uh, – you know, take care of everything that need to be take care of. Um, you know, so it was, you know, I plays in my mind from time to time, you know, but I'm, I had a, I had a good conversation. You know, I respect the Saints organization. Um, I had a good conversation with uh, Coach Payton and just reminded me that, you know, throughout everything, your father's going to always, your parents want you to be happy, yeah. you know, whether they're here or there. And, you know, that kind of made me, you know, realize like well, what makes me happy and, you know, just, how valuable each day is and the people you have in your life. And, you know, it obviously completely changed my life. And you're released at the end of that preseason, which means you spend a couple of months at home. I mean, I can only imagine the thoughts and the emotions that you're going through having your personal and professional world rocked like that. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely tough. I think, um, you know, me and my uh, fiance now, we lived in Austin, Texas at the time. And um, my sister is a, a junior at UT Austin right now, so it was good to have my sister there, um, have family there. But, you know, sitting at home, you know, watching football, you know, not like it wasn't important to me, but there was so much other stuff outside of um, football that was just going on. And, you know, I really, you know, in October, you know, I had worked out with eight different teams, you know, through those like six weeks that I was at the home, as, at the crib. And, and I was like, you know, maybe I don't know if this is – how long this journey, you know, really is for me. And, and I got the opportunity to come to L.A. And, you know, I, like I said, I, I was just going to take every every single day, you know, day by day and not take it for granted and just in, enjoy and embrace my role. And, you know, I think ever since I started doing that, I've enjoyed, you know, going out there, playing football, you know, and having myself. And it reminded me, it reminded me, like, how much fun, you know, I really have playing this game. And that's why I'm very just grateful to – you know, the Rams and because it felt like throughout that time, through the ups and downs, like I finally, you know, found my love again for football, you know, so it was it was special. One moment that captured it for me in the end, you're wearing a T-shirt honoring your late father in the locker room at SoFi Stadium holding the Lombardi trophy. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's tough that whole day, you know, just because I know my dad would have been there for me or been there with me, and he was always there with me. And just knowing um, how proud of him, uh, proud of me he was, um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I knew he was there with me. And it was um, – and I hold that – I bring that T-shirt with me every single game I play. So it's special to me just to be able to have him um, in a way I can hold him in my heart. Just this past April, you're now a world champion, and the state of Florida announced uh, an $80 million uh, carve-out in their budget for improvements to the Level 1 Trauma Center at UF, UF Health in Jacksonville, um, which is now named after its former CEO, your father. Um, and I listened on YouTube this morning uh, to your words at that event. I want to share a few of them now with our audience, too, if we can. You know, he taught me so many values and lessons of just being, you know, a man of service, a man of faith, you know, a man that, you know, what truly is a man, you know, not somebody who is in the spotlight, but someone who does the dirty work when people aren't looking. You know, I think we all uh, kind of struggle with uh, mortality and, and the imprint we have here uh, on this place and this time to know that your father's name will be on that building and will be helping patients for many years to come. What does that mean to you and your family? Oh, it's special. I mean, obviously you want to create your own legacy, but I think my, my father's legacy in my eyes was the gift of service and the gift of, you know, just being able to be a, to make sure you can be a better human being um, at the end of the day. And 
just the life he lived um, every single day. I remember growing up on Christmas Day, dad would come home from the hospital working a night shift. Um, and he did that my whole life. And just the just the the gratefulness of life he had for life that he had, um, you know, it was it's truly special. And, and and it just shows that he cared more about other people than himself. And it's special for us as a family because, you know, obviously the name, but it's a place he would have loved because he was giving service to others so they could be you know, more healthy and more and live better lives and be, continue to live lives of what they, of the way they want to live their life. And your mother, is it Carla Neal Haley? Yes. Is yes. in medicine as well. Yes. My mom has ran uh, her own private practice for the last 15 years. Um, so she is a MD and she does med- internal medicine and pediatrics. So she's been doing that for a long time. And she's a liver transplant recipient. I mean, I can't believe there's even more depth to this <laughs> personal story, but that's I mean, that's serious. No, it's it was uh, it's been a journey ever since my she got sick really my senior year of high school, um, and so going to Penn State was pretty tough. Just leaving my family and it was pretty far, um, but you know, and then you know, she, obviously seeing your mom's health kind of decline through the years, it was kind of it was tough, you know, it was, and. Um, but I, I realized, you know, I had a platform and be able to, you know, kind of work with, you know, the American Liver Foundation as I grew in my career was it was special to me to be able to raise awareness about liver disease. And, you know, my mom was able to uh, have a, a living donor transplant, um, which is, you know, something that most people don't know about that living donors can give transplant, especially in the liver. So, you know, that was something her that she has now created her own foundation to kind of set towards so to, you know, learn, gain people so they can have knowledge about uh, liver, liver disease. And I take it she's doing well. And in she, fact, was there Sunday with you? Yeah, she's Arizona? doing well. You know, um, obviously, you know, I want her to stay safe as possible because, you know, she's, you know, we don't want her to get um, compromised because, um, you know, with her, with her health and especially during COVID, but she's, <laughs> she's not going to miss a game, you know, and uh, it's, it's important to me. Um, you know, she's been one of my biggest supporters. You know, she's on the road every single weekend. So, um, you know, it was tough for her when she couldn't travel. So I know she's she's not going to miss one because it's special to her. Wow. Grant, you've been so generous with your time, and I truly am appreciative. I know our audience is too. Let's finish with three and out, as we do every week here on the Rams Reveal podcast. Normally, if you get all three of these questions right, I would make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf, but I'm sure they would be okay with, and I hope you are too. Maybe this week we'll point it towards the American Liver Foundation. That's awesome. And the work that your mom and you continue to do. Thank you. All right. uh, First question, what was your teammate Nick Scott like in college? The same person. (laughs) It's actually insane. Uh, me and Nick went into college freshman year together in 2014, and he is exact same person. Goofy, you know, just enjoys life to the fullest in all aspects, and um, and just runs around taking people's heads off. You know, he's the same person. Good Nittany Lion contingent now in yeah. Los Angeles with A. Rob mixed in too. Exactly, right? got a couple Nittany Lions. Penn State has to get past Northwestern, then a trip to the Big House, which kind of leads me to my next question. First of all, how often does your 2016 touchdown off the block <laughs> field goal against undefeated Ohio State surface? Ah, uh, too many times. Um, you know, I, it's special because you know, for me during that moment, kind of blacked out. Um, so now when I watch it, it's always it's always laughable. It's just crazy. It's been I don't know five, six, six, seven years now since then. But um, yeah, it gets played a lot. It's it's fun to watch. I was going to ask you, can you rank the top three stadiums in the Big Ten? But, uh, I mean, it's got to be Big House, the Shoe. Not in any order. I'm going to put Beaver Stadium first. I knew you were going to land there. Yeah, so those so are the other two. Yeah, Beaver Stadium, Big House, and The Shoe. Awesome. And yeah. you played in all three, of played course. Played in all three. Yep. Amazing. Uh, last question here, three and out, on the uh, Rams Reveal podcast. Is it safe to say that between you and your head coach, Sean McVay, you were actually the better Atlanta prep player? <laughs> Here's the backstory. Uh, you led the Levitt Lions to their first state title in 43 years back in 2013. Yep. Sean was all right. He was the 4A offensive player of the year, won a state title too. But <laughs> Nah, I mean, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, when I first got here, I always knew Coach McVay went to Marist. Um, I don't think he had any idea I went to Lovett because, I mean, 
it's not a it's not a lot of people you know from love it out there in the league so um but it's 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 funny because you know i remember watching him beat uh you know calvin johnson for like offensive play of the year but you know um competitively i'm gonna have to say you know me um but i used to play as high school all the time they're a pretty big rival and um so that's just atlanta private school uh football right there for you Grant, it was awesome to see what you did on Sunday. And now, knowing what we do, I think you're even easier to root for. Uh, I hope it's a great season and a long career ahead for you with the Los Angeles Rams. Thank you so much. All right, for Grant, I'm JB. This is Rams Revealed, presented by NFL All Day.